yo If you send me, I will go My God, on to the I am Always call whatever you need from me. You know I won't drop the ball. You know you my all in all. I know you the god of all. So just tell me what to do. I know you can never lose. My storage is vacant. I'm yours for the taking. Lord, use me however you see fit. When you call. Thank you.
Revelation is defined as the act of revealing hidden truths. God communicating divine truths, unlocking mysteries. And when our eyes are opened, the darkness is flooded with great light. Immediately deliverance has come and freedom has come. This freedom isn't just for you or me, but for our families, our communities, and the generations connected to us. His word, by His Spirit, for His kingdom. This isn't just any church. This is Revelation Church. Hello, you all, and welcome to Revelation Church. We will now inform you of our Lifeline Essentials. Your attention is key, as this may differ from any church service you've experienced before. If this is your first visit, we welcome and greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus. If you've already been here before, it's great to see you again, family. How are you staying connected? The information booth is where you can find our Lifeline QR code so you can officially become a member of Revelation Nation. And to those who are watching online, don't worry. You can scan the code too. We love to have you join us online. Beyond joining us every Sunday and every Prophetic Thursday, it's important to keep growing spiritually. Sign up for Power Shot, a daily devotional on realms of meditation led by Prophet Lovi himself. You could visit us on prophetlovi.com. And it doesn't stop there. We love growing middle schoolers and high schoolers here at Revelation Youth. On top of that, we meet in person on Fridays and every Tuesday for Global Zoom Prayer. Daughters of Revelation, hosted by Prophetess Maggie, gather together every first Tuesday of the month, and the whole Rev Nation family come together to pray every first Saturday of the month with Apostle Gershon. Zoom link available. The world is changing all around us, and your help enables us to spread the message of Jesus. You can do this by connecting what matters most to you to who matters most to you. When you give your offering in-house, please write legibly using the envelopes in the seat back in front of you. Prefer to give online? The accepted methods will appear on your screen. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms and tag us in your pictures and your videos. Many people worldwide have encountered this house and the message of Jesus. All because someone liked, subscribed, and shared something very real happening right here. If you have any questions, just stop by the information booth in the lobby or visit the website at revelationchurchla.org. Thank you for your attention. We know this will be a service where you will encounter God. The time is now. Your time is now. The Lord has something just for you. Hola, mi gente! Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hola, mi gente! Yes, now that's a warm welcome. Amen. <laughs> now that's a warm welcome, Revelation Nation. We greet everybody here and all of us watching online. Isa, ¿cómo estás? <gasps> you hear that? <laughs> Looks Love like him. I know a little bit Spanish. <laughs> Wow, this really is an international church, you guys. I'm good too, and I hope all of you are also doing good. After all, we had such a bountiful April, and after all that the Lord Jesus himself did for us, resurrection, the fast, the baptisms. Oh my God. But we have new dimensions to reach in God, and we go glory to glory. And it's time for to learn what he has for us in April. Yes, and we hit the ground running. Ladies, Daughters on Tuesday was groundbreaking, so powerful, incredible, incredible experience. Daughters of Revelation. Yes. Everyone, guys included, y'all need to watch this recap. It's coming on Monday at 6.30 p.m. on our Revelation Church YouTube channel. Go live as we discuss the highlights, the key takeaways, and ensure that everyone connects with the powerful word Prophetess Maggie brought us at Daughters this month. 
Yes, it indeed was a powerful message about the lens of the Almighty, and it was life-changing, so make sure to tune in for that. But how many of you like to dance in here? Yes. <laughs> Well, you want to mark your calendars because we have our dance ministry auditions and uh, this is going to be in April, not too far away. But you must first attend orientation to gather all of the information concerning the ministry before you audition. This is a mandatory step if you're interested in even auditioning. So at this time, the auditions will be held only for adults 18 years and up. Orientation will be held this Sunday, April 7th, Ooh. so make sure to mark that and don't accidentally go home after church like you usually do. <laughs> this is immediately following the church service and it's gonna be in the overflow sanctuary. Make sure to register at revelationchurchla.org. When we have more events, everyone check this out. The youth of this house are so blessed. And this April 5th, you are having a service taught by Prophetess Lena. For all the youth at 6.30 p.m., it's going to be a blast. Invite your friends and wait, there's more. Revelation Youth is now going to meet every Friday at 6.30 p.m. They've switched things up a little bit because from now on, middle school students will meet twice a month and high school students will meet twice a month. And with that being said... They're about to have their first paint and chill night. Wow. This one's just for the high schoolers, though. So please make sure you register your high school students for paint and chill on April 12th at 6.30 p.m. That sounds so fun. And the best part about it is that the kids themselves, they, they want to meet more often. And this is why, uh, you know, a lot of this is happening. It's their desire. So, well, we have something for the adults now. Uh, we have our solo, our singles ministry, who is hosting their first summit on April 19th at 7 p.m., where they will engage in deep discussions and share personal journeys and insights. The event is open to adults aged 18 and up, and you can attend either in person or online if you're part of our Revelation Nation, out Amen. of state, out of country. Uh, so this will be available for you, where you will receive a private link. Visit revelationchurchla.org to register. You don't want to miss this. It's going to be so interesting. Deep discussions, and once again, a private link so that your uh, you know personal information stays personal. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. Also, folks, we want to let you know if you recently left a Bible or any small personal belongings after attending one of our many services that we recently had, please check our lost and found currently at the info booth in the lobby. Retrieve your items. We do clear out our lost and found every two weeks. There's a lot of stuff in there from this past weekend, so please make sure you don't delay. Yes. Well, Isa, I think I'm ready to pray, to worship. Amen. Are you ready, Revelation Nation? Amen. <laughs> it's such an honor to be a part of this house. And this past week, between Good Friday, between, yeah. um, between prayer, between Easter Sunday, daughters, it really is just yes. more apparent now than ever what this church is going for. We're coming for the whole world. Well, before we actually pray and worship, let me ask you, Isa, do you feel like there's a change after you know, everything that God did for us in April. Oh, um, you mean after breaking our fast? After breaking our fast, after the resurrection, do you feel like there's a new glory and a new shift? A hundred thousand percent. How could you not? How could you not? Revelation Nation, did we, did we feel that fast? <laughs> amen, amen. All right, everyone. Please okay. get ready to pray. I'm ready to pray. Posture your hearts. Welcome home. We love you. Thank you. Hallelujah, saints, how are we doing tonight? 
Let's rise. Let's give God praise in the house. Glory to God. The word of God says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgive us all our iniquities. Who heals all our diseases. Who redeems our lives from destruction. And crowns us with joy and loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth would be renewed like the eagle this morning i want you to lift your voice and thank the lord for all the benefits we are yet standing we are yet standing we are yet standing. His mercies have been new. We are yet standing. Radabazona Makata. We are yet standing. Oh, give him praise. Ilabadosha, give him praise. We are yet standing. Oh, he has seen us through this week. He has seen us through this month. We are yet standing. His mercies are new every morning. Lift up your voice and give the King of glory praise in the house. Wherever you're joining us tonight, lift up your voice. For the Lord is good. His mercies endures forever. Oh, he heals us of every disease. Master, we give you praise tonight. We lift your church before the throne of grace. And we thank you. Your word is yea and amen. Your word says when we call upon you, you will hear us. Oh, you will show us and answer us, oh Lord. So Father, we connect tonight. We are deliberate tonight. We are deliberate tonight. And we say, oh Lord, we thank you for gracing us with your presence because your word says where two or three are guarded that you are in our midst as we stand on behalf of our families as we stand on behalf of our homes oh we thank you master that it is well with us we stand oh lord making a declaration that even our bodies are receptive to divine intervention master your word reminds us that with man things are impossible but with god all things are possible may it be possible oh lord as we lift our voice lift your voice every engagement in the realms of the spirit that is not of god we cancel we are bought we nullify in the mighty name of jesus every mount that rises against the people of god we terminate every engagement every engagement we terminate that is not of god thank you lord that we are secured in you we are secured in you our families are secured oh rabbi shota everything that concerns us is secured in the mighty name of jesus we give you praise that we are in your presence and your word says in your presence there is fullness of joy hallelujah I want you to lift your voice, lift your hands, and thank the King of glory that we stand in the place of solutions. We stand in the house of revelation. We stand in the house where miracles are our bread. Miracles are our inheritance. Lift your voice and thank the King of glory. 
We thank you, Lord, that tonight is a special night. We thank you, Marabashunda, for the gathering of the brethren. We thank you, Marabashunda. We lift your church. We lift your church. Them that are connected with us, even online, we lift them before the throne of grace. That they will see the glory of the Lord. They will experience the power of the Lord. We thank you, Lord. Your word says that every time when we come, that there is a visitation. I give you praise for your visitation. For your visitation. I thank you that people are delivered today. I thank you that people are set free today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice. Let your prayer be Lord as I lift my voice. May the prophet locate me tonight. May the prophet locate me tonight. May the prophet locate me tonight. Lord, speak to me. Oh, Ramashata. I thank you, Lord, that we stand on holy grounds in all the sanctuaries. I thank you that they are holy grounds. Lift your voice and thank the Lord for the miracles on your behalf, for the miracles on your behalf in your home, in your family. Come on, lift your voice. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout in the house. Hey. 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 Hey.
How many of you have a mighty praise on the inside? When I think about just between Sunday, we were last here Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, between now and today, between then and today, I can think of numerous things that the Lord has done. Are you guys keeping account of what God has done? Because if you're really keeping account, then you won't have any problem praising him. You don't have to find a stale praise. You have something fresh that you can praise him for right now. Somebody almost didn't make it. Somebody was in a car wreck. Life was threatened. Things were going on in people's lives. But we're here tonight. I dare, I dare you to make some noise for the King of Kings. Come on, Revelation Nation. Revelation Nation, make some noise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As we sing this song, it says, let the king of glory in. This is his house, so it's not like we're letting him in. It's your heart. Prepare, sing with us tonight. Don't just sing the song. Tonight, worship with us. Tonight, praise with us. Tonight, get what you need to get right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Revelation Nation, we welcome you online. We welcome you all over the world. Please enjoy yourself tonight. God bless. Somebody send up a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we go. Put your hands together. Come on. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory tonight, Lord. And we just want you to come on in. Hallelujah. Mighty warrior, great in battle, you have overcome. My defender, no contender, you've already won. And I will lift up my eyes to the hills where my help comes from. For the Lord is my shield and my fortress, I fear no one. Revelation Church, you ready to go? Hey, come on! Let the King of glory, let the King of glory in. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Say, let the King of glory in. Let the King of glory, let the King of glory in. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Say, let the King of glory My provider, yes, your gyra, you have done. Whoa, chains are broken, like dice open. When we lift you up, and I will lift up. Oh, for the Lord is your sheep. Oh, praise. 
the one who has redeemed your soul. Hey, oh, praise the one who has authority. Hey, oh, praise the one who sets every captive free. Hey, so we sing hallelujah.
with your whole heart. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. He loves it when you praise him. Yes. Come on one more time. This is beautiful. Sing hallelujah.
him a shout of praise and glory. If you know that this living God has never left you, nor forsaken you, give him the highest praise. Give him the highest praise. Jesus. next song, this is your opportunity to just lay down all your problems, all your burdens, whatever's worrying you. In this moment, be prophetic, be intentional, and let it all go, because he'll never fail you. So all of your problems and all of your pain, even your trouble, you can give it to Jesus. And all of your burdens, and all of your cares Even your struggles You can give it to Jesus Cause here's why Cause he won't fail He won't fail No, he won't leave you No, he won't fail He won't fail He won't fail No, he won't leave And all of your faith, even your struggles, you can what? Whoa, and all of your burdens, and all of your cares, even your struggles.
your God won't fail. Your God won't fail. He will never leave you. No, He won't fail. Come on and sing. Say, He won't.
church. Yeah. 
we worship you, Father. We worship you, Lord. None can compare to you, God. There is no one like you. You're holy forever, Lord. A thousand generations fallen down in worship to sing the song ages to the land and all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the land your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above All thrones and domains of house and position is your name stands above them all and the angels cry Holy all creation cry. Oh 
out with the top of your lungs. You have been
Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, your only Son and your Holy Son. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. Without him, we would not be here, O Lord. Father, through your Son, Jesus, we have been sanctified. Through your Son, Jesus, we have been forgiven. Through your Son, Jesus, we have been purified. Father, as we stand before you, we pray that your mighty hand that is able to sanctify, purify, and restore us will surely be seen upon us tonight and that every burden, every difficulty will be taken from us and that we will stand in the center of your will. Father, be glorified now and eternally in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. clap your hands to the Lord Jesus. Clap your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Revelation Nation, how you feeling? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we turn off the air? It's really cold. I felt your prayer. I felt your prayer. <laughs> I believe that God is going to visit us in a special way. Amen. And I know as long as our eyes are on him we will never be disappointed amen i want you to understand something we are disappointed because our eyes shift from him when our eyes remain on the living savior we can never be disappointed disappointment comes from men never from god when we place our hopes and our dreams and our desires, our pursuit on man. It is in human nature, it is in it within man to fail. So if a person fails you, it, they are not evil. It's called being human. So God himself, God himself does not trust man. So God tells a man, don't put your trust in man. So even God doesn't trust us. He loves us unconditionally. But he doesn't trust us. Because he knows the ways of the flesh. It is the nature of the flesh for the flesh to fail. So if you never want to be disappointed in life, don't count on man. Count on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, you can clap better. <laughs> Medicine will fail you. Brothers will fail you. Sisters will fail you. Friends will fail you. Your community may fail you. Thank you, baby. Thank you so much. Can you keep this for me put in my office, please? <laughs> you should see what he... Look, look, look at what he painted for me. Show, show them. Show, show them this, what the drawing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so... So we are able to be, it is normal for everyone around you to fail. But we don't seem to learn the lesson. How could they do that? Of course they are going to do that, they are human. Our mothers will fail us. Your husband may fail you. Your wife may fail you. But Jesus, your children may fail you, but Jesus... Your health may fail you by Jesus. Amen. Your money may fail you by Jesus. Amen. Everything around us may fail. But Jesus Christ the Lord will never, ever, 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 ever fail us. Amen. So, when we comprehend this truth, and we truly rely on Him, then the days of disappointments are gone. Amen. So do yourself a favor. Shake your neighbor. Say, neighbor, do yourself a favor. Neighbor, do yourself a favor. Shake your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Do yourself a favor. Do yourself a 
favor. Put your trust in the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord. I can't hear you. Hey, but do yourself a favor and put your trust in the Lord. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, do yourself a favor and put your trust in the Lord. Neighbor, do yourself a favor and put your trust in the Lord. You can say it louder and better. Neighbor, do yourself a favor and put your trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord. That is the key to avoid disappointment. Amen. You do that, you'll never be disappointed in your life. You will not live in regret either when it comes to people. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Hebrews chapter number 10 from verse 22 to 24. Can we read it together? Yes. yes. One, two, three. Let us draw near with a true heart in the full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Can we read it again? Yes. Can we read it again? Yes. One, two, three. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Now, you may sit in heavenly places. You may sit in heavenly places. I'm going to um, explain something to you that I think will lead us to a very powerful place in the Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe it's going to lead us to a very powerful place. In the Lord God. A Christian's life is not only centered in prayer. It's not only centered in worship. You know, when I speak of prayer, we are talking about all forms of prayer. Worship, thanksgiving, uh, offerings, praise. All these things are sacrifices unto God. Some are material, some are spiritual. But we put all this together in what we call prayer. Because there are different means of prayer. Speaking in tongues is one of the forms of prayer. People think many times to pray in tongues means to pray in the spirit. It's one of the ways to pray in spirit. It's not the only way. So there are many ways to approach God. But for the sake of time, we're going to put it in one category and call it prayer. Can we turn off the air, please? It's cold. Hey. Now, now, a believer operates off what we call a clear conscience. Now, a clear conscience is a very, 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 very important thing in the sight of God. Because your conscience determines how you present yourself before God. So there are many that pray, that worship, that do all the right things physically. They fulfill whatever must be fulfilled physically. But when it comes to the presentation of their conscience, there is failure. And you have to understand that God sees how you present yourself, not physically, but he measures you by your heart. So the condition of your conscience, and what does it mean to be, uh, what do I mean by the conscious? Your conscious is what you are aware of, your awareness. Now before we go into deep details about this, I want you to understand that in order for you to have a clear conscience that can be received before God, there are certain things 
as a child of God you ought to do. Now, what you are aware of determines what you receive from God. The Bible says, if you pray, believe, and you shall receive. That means when I come to prayer, I don't wait for the manifestation. I must carry the manifestation with me. Come on. Amen. As I approach prayer or else, when I say amen, I will come out with nothing because God does not answer your prayer when you pray. He answers you before you pray. Amen. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Notice, God is not dealing with your words. He's dealing with your conscience. What am I aware of when I approach God? Do I approach God knowing that God can help me? Do I approach God knowing that he has already healed me? Do I approach God thinking that maybe he will do something for me? The moment you second guess in your presentation before God, you have already ripped how you came before God. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody. When you approach God, the approach before God must be done systematically with a sober mind. I have seen so many people say, I've been praying, you know, I'm just waiting for the manifestation. I'm just waiting for the manifestation. But the Bible is saying, he who promised is faithful. And God is not a liar. He's not man that he should lie. So if I approach God to say, well, now, now, let me ask, let me explain to you how God uh, operates his promises. What God said to your forefathers when he was blessing them, the promise was that the ones that will come after will continue in what I gave you. Okay? But remember, the thing that is given you, it is a promise because the others have not come. But when the others come, they are not waiting for the promise. They are the promise. Amen. It's good. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. So when you come to God... And being a covenant child, every one of you that is in the Lord, you are what we call a covenant child. You are purposed before the foundations of the earth. That is why no matter what the devil tries to do, he can never snatch you from the hands of God. Amen. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Now, Christians operate on what we call confession, profession. Are you hearing me? Confession, profession, declaration, renouncing and denouncing. If you don't work these five things, your conscience will have problems. Uh, Hello. Nice to see you, Ben. Your your conscience will will suffer certain problems. There are spirits that follow you. The spirits that are the most dangerous to man are the ones that have the power to influence your mind. I'll say it again. The witch in your village who's trying to close your doors is not powerful. The one that is dangerous is the one that now can begin to influence your mind. The world is under a spell because the devil, the the God of this world, has influenced their minds. Come on, come on. I don't know if you can hear me. There are demons that are after your life. You don't bind them and cast them out. You denounce them. Amen. 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 I'm going to say that one more time. There are spirits that follow you. You cannot just say, I bind you. You can't. The only way they live your life is you have to denounce them. Not only denounce them, but you have to renounce them. Now, if a spirit has entered your family via a covenant, you cannot bind that spirit because that spirit has a right to be there. And the spiritual world primarily works off legalities. It's really a court system. 
The spiritual world does not operate off emotions. It does not operate off how you felt on that day. It does not operate on how many good energies you felt within you. The spiritual world operates off legalities. If a spirit is in your family, and sometimes you don't discern spirits only by what happens, but you examine the thoughts that have been flowing within the family. You being in a prophetic church, you already understand that thoughts are not independent of a spirit. Every thought you have ever had in your mind, it is impossible for you to think or have a thought that is not influenced by a spirit. Either the spirit of God or either angelic spirits or demonic spirits or the spirit of men. Men can influence you to think a certain way. Demons can also influence you to think a certain way. And God can also influence you to think a certain way. I don't know if somebody is hearing me. So when you begin to examine your life and you begin to see, mm, certain thoughts don't seem to be adding up. My grandfather was struggling with suicidal thoughts. <sighs> My father and mother are struggling with the same thing. I am born. Also, I'm seeing everybody around me struggling with this, and I'm seeing it with me. No, this is a guy that has been around my family. Mm -hmm. And the only way we get rid of this guy is we have to denounce that death is not our portion. Amen. Amen. But if everybody stays quiet, that spirit is going to influence your mind. And when you stand before God to pray, you see your life of no value. And God cannot work with somebody that does not value what Jesus did on the cross. Oh, you teach me. I don't know if you can hear me. Jesus, our Lord, cannot operate with somebody does not, that does not care for their own well-being. Most of the prayers you are praying are not, get, are not getting answered because your conscience has been affected. That you pray even though your mind is contradicting your prayer. Mm. Come on. Mm. You're saying, Father, bless me to be successful. But then your mind is saying, who else? You successful? Oh yeah, you're going to do it again and you're going to fail. So yeah, okay. But you are praying, you don't mean what you pray because there is already opposition within you. This does not get fixed by I bind. This only gets repaired by what? Renouncing and denouncing. Amen. Some of you have become comfortable with poverty. Come on. Uh, let me go to the other side of the church. Come on. Let me, let me talk to somebody. Some of you have become comfortable with just as long as I can pay my rent. You have not known God to be the God of abundance. So your conscience cannot make you believe you can live in abundance. Maybe let me, this is for overflow. Maybe those who are online. Some of you think you're fighting devils, but you're fighting your own conscience. Wow. Amen. Am I communicating, Apostle? <laughs> Many of us are fighting with our own conscience. You're not fighting any devil. The devil is simply taking advantage of what is already planted within your mind. Because for us human beings, thoughts are silent, but in the spirit they are loud. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Let me show you. Jesus is in a house. Mary Magdalene runs and he's crying at Jesus' feet. And the master in the house is saying, well, if this guy was really a prophet, why would he allow this woman to touch him? The Bible says, and Jesus answered his, Jesus perceived his thoughts and said, hey, I came into your house. You never greeted me with a kiss. 
you never hugged me you never anointed me but this woman since i came in here she has been notice jesus was responding to his thoughts now many of you pray you don't get answers but every thought you have ever had that's what god is responding to wow so good i, I think i'm done I don't think you understand what I'm telling you. When the Bible says, pray without ceasing, it is primarily talking about the state of your consciousness. Boy. Because when your mind is pure, yes. you see negative things, you see God's opportunity. Yes. You see difficult things, you see a way where there is no way. Yes. I'm here to prophesy to somebody. Yes. There is a change in your mind that is coming. I receive. There is a shift in your mind that is coming. I receive. So, so comprehend this. See it for two seconds. I promise you I'm going to finish soon. It's good. Tonight I feel like I will prophesy small, small. Amen. Amen, amen. This is, let me show you how the conscious is evil. Or it can become evil. Many a times, and hear me and hear me well. When you are a man or a woman of God, or, and I mean men and women of God, I'm not speaking about a preacher necessarily. I'm talking about everyone that has received Jesus. You have become a priest unto God. You are called unto God. You may not stand on the pulpit, but you're standing on the pulpit of the world. Somebody is receiving Christ because of you. Amen. Are, are you hearing me? But now we start having problems when our conscience is only aware of us and what we think and not what others around us may have received from God that we do not have. I want you to hear me and hear me well. Everybody has been born with a unique capacity to see God in a way I would never. And how I see God is not the way you're going to see God. But together we can mature in the knowledge and in the mind of God. Knowing his ways beyond what we can ever imagine. How do we know that our conscience is affected in the church? A simple example is this. You will see somebody being used by God. Beyond your comprehension. Beyond what you believed to be right. The apostle stood and said, well, salvation is only for the Jews. Then they saw the Holy Spirit descending on the Gentiles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then they said, now there is no Jew or Gentile. Why? Because they saw God responded to those without the law. The same as those who have been keeping the law. He did not make a distinction. So the apostles matured and realized, no, this salvation thing is not a Jew's only thing. It may have begun with us, but it's for everybody. Now, 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 look at this in the church. When I begin to determine your hair disqualifies you, but Jesus is giving that person souls. Your nose ring disqualifies you, but Jesus is giving that man souls. Your tattoos have defiled you, but Jesus keeps sending souls to that person. It means something is wrong with your conscience because you are trying to box God, yet God has stepped out of that box. Yes. Hallelujah. I, I want somebody to hear me. Let me explain to you something that I was, I was thinking about. I have late night thoughts a lot. Many times I'll sit down and I'll write. There is something that I realize, and this is for men and women of God. Okay, this is for men and women of God. When Jesus, our Lord came to Peter. Peter was washing his nets. Peter was a professional fisherman. He wasn't a hobbyist. That's what he did. Jesus comes and Jesus is teaching on the shore of his boat, where his boat was, sorry, at the shore of the beach, and he's teaching in that place. 
Jesus sits in Peter's boat and Jesus is teaching. And Peter is saying, yes, Rabbi. Oh, teach, you're teaching well. Everybody is listening to him. Jesus says, Peter, Peter, let's go catch fish. Peter looks at Jesus and says, ah, I've been catching fish all night. That was to tell Jesus, you don't know about this fishing thing. And Peter was right because deep sea fishing is only done in the night. That is how it is. Only people who are fishing for, for hobby go out with a hook and do it in the day. But if you're doing mass fishing, it's only done at night. So it tells Jesus, I've been fishing all night. But if you say so, nevertheless we'll go. Notice he's saying, I will go because of you, but not because you're actually good at fishing. Mm. They get in the boat. They get to a certain place. The Lord Jesus says, uh, stop right here. They stop. Jesus says, throw your net down. He throws his net. He says, throw it deeper. He throws it deeper. Then Jesus commands the fish, and fish jump into the net. That the boat began to sink because of the number of fish. They call reinforcement. The nets began to tear. They had to let go of a lot more fish that, than what was in their boats because even their boats started to sink. Then Peter looks at Jesus, falls on his knees and says, what do you want with me, Lord, for I am a sinner? He realized what he thought yes. was completely wrong. Amen. Now, the Lord Jesus did not condemn him. The Lord Jesus actually told him something different. He said, don't worry. I will make you a fisher of men. He said, I showed you that your way of catching fish is not the only way. But now I will teach you how to fish people. So there are methods that people are used to catching souls. Come on. Yeah. Teaching. Yeah. Teaching it. But for every generation, God will do something new. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, sit for two seconds sit for two seconds I'm not done sit for two seconds remember we are no longer under the law so what you consider unclean Jesus said it's not what goes into man it's what comes out of man but, but watch this let me, let me go a little deeper this is what I learned I was meditating on this and I realized something Jesus said I'll make you a fisher of men now if you know anything about fishing Every fish is baited by a different bait. There are fish you need a worm. There are fish that you need a big fish. There are fish that you need blood and meat. There are fish that you need nets. There are fish that you need spears that fly into the water to catch them. Every fish is caught differently. Men and women of God are simply bait on a hook called the word of God. Come on. Come on. We are all sent to different fish. Yeah. Amen. Yours may be to another. Uh -huh. Some of us to another. But if our conscience is affected, we will want everyone to be like us. And now the question is to ask, if we are all like you, what about the others that you did not catch? Come on. When we begin to put conditions on other people that restrict or restricts the move of God, now our conscience is playing God. And it becomes easier to talk down somebody else in order to lift yourself up. Teaching. You're teaching. Be careful not to be talking about people in order to validate yourself. Amen. Amen. That is a sign your conscience is actually carnal and not spiritual. Amen. Spiritual men and women look at what is God producing and what is God doing. What is God doing? Within somebody. Why is God doing that? Why is God doing this? 
A clear conscience presents you right before God. A distorted conscience produces you distorted before God and God cannot deal with something that does not look like him. God only deals with his image. Yes. Because you are called to be conformed to the image of Christ. Yes. And that image is primarily your mental state. Let this mind be in you. That was also in who? Christ Jesus. So if the mind of Christ is not in you. Notice he did not say pray for the mind. He said allow this kind of thinking. It's not, oh, I declare her, the mind of Christ. No, you can't declare the mind of Christ. You have to look at what Jesus, how Jesus looked at things. You have to observe how he moved around people. You have to observe the full counsel of the word of God and allow that to be your map. That's, good. That's real good. Real good. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 19 to 23. Okay, you can turn off the heat, but don't turn on the air. <laughs> For the people shall dwell in Zion, at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. When your cry does not move God, something is wrong with your conscience. Mm. Uh, I'm done. Come on, teach. I, I think I'm done. You didn't. It did not say because you see, if you look at how our fathers in Scripture prayed, and you look at how we are praying, we realize that we're actually doing too much. These people had conversations with God. God, I'm tired. Just take me out of this world. You, you can't even say that you, oh, Father Shanda, there is no, there is no realness with God. True. There is nothing wrong with looking at Jesus and saying, Lord, I love you, but I am tired. Father, intervene for this situation or give me rest. Yes. You can't even pray like that because you have been programmed. So good. You have no conscience. You're operating with somebody else's conscience. Mm. Yet you're in the middle of a crisis yeah. that needs your cry to move God. You will pray like other people. Instead of praying according to your relationship with God yeah. that he established that has nothing to do with us. Yes. Amen. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. You will cry no more. Yeah. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. So God's graciousness is known by how you cry and he responds. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. Verse 20. And thou, and though the Lord give you the bread of, of adversity... And the waters of affliction. Hmm. So why does God give us adversity and waters of affliction? God is trying to bring out the evil out of you so that you can get rid of it. Amen. 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 Some of you don't know what is inside you until you go through a difficult time. Amen. Some of you didn't know you have temper issues until somebody provoked you. Amen. Amen. Then you look at yourself, you say, I didn't know I get this angry. Now you know, now denounce it. Yeah. Amen. I didn't know I quit this fast. Now you know there is a weakness in you. Now denounce it and renounce it. Yeah. Amen. The waters of affliction open you up to see who you really are. Yeah. Good. Good. That's right. One thing I love about combat sports, which I have done, I fought three times. Not, oh, no, real fight. And I've trained for over nine years. One thing I love about fighting is that it is real. There is no hiding. There is no running. The training is actually worse than the fighting, but the fighting is more scary than anything you've ever faced. And you will know about yourself. 
Are you a quitter? Do you look for a way out? Are you full of excuses? Oh, you will know about yourself. <laughs> you will know who you are very quickly. How determined are you? Are you able to persevere? Are you able to stand when everything has failed? When technique goes out of the window, are you able to just push forward? If I die, I die. Do I have the heart that it takes to receive what God has for me? Do I have the persistence that is needed? Do I have that persistence to keep pushing, to keep pushing, to keep pushing? You know, I always talk about my, my trainer, my, my head coach at Saxons, uh, Julio Trana, one of the best uh, striking coaches I know. That man has made me do things I never knew that I could do. He told me, love, you, you can roll. Like, the way you're athletic, you can roll. Uh, uh, I don't know how many it was. If it was 500 meters or a little more, he said, in under a minute 10. I was like, nah, there's no way. The man made me do it in less. So you never know what is inside of you unless you are pushed Amen. to the limit. Amen. Your account will be bigger when God pushes bigger projects to you. Amen. See let me talk to somebody else. Now watch, that, watch this. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the waters of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Hmm. You, need, you know, many of us, when we go through things, we push away the people that have been a blessing to us. That is a sign our conscience has problems. One thing that I thank God for is I am not a hypocrite. People that prayed for me, I thank them publicly. People that blessed me, I thank them publicly. I have no shame. No man is an island. And I've said this many times. I don't understand when people cannot credit people for what God did through them. I've said this a million times. I have never, I've never seen it to be a, diminish, a, a, what, a demeaning thing. It doesn't diminish me. If anything, it shows. If Jesus needed John the Baptist, who am I? If anything, it shows the favor of God. How many people God has put around me to make sure I get to where... I am going. If God is about to lift you, when adversity comes, which are the voices you listened to? You see, the problem is not success. God will put you in places whereby he gives you voices, but when things are good, nobody listens. I have money. What are you going to tell me? I have this. What do you have? This is happening. Who are you to tell me this? The Bible says only a fool rejects counsel. That's right. That's right. That's right. But when God actually puts you through a process, because there are times when we mess up, God takes our teachers away. Mm. We are left on our own until we learn the value of proper and good counsel. Amen. So good. I feel like I'm talking to myself. There are times in my life I used to say, hey, Lord, can I just get one direction? Hey. The way things are looking right now, can I just get a word, a word, <laughs> that would tell me where to stand? No, you go through those times like, what voice will give me a sense of being established? I don't know if somebody can hear me. But through this season, God will make sure your teachers are there. Amen. See, see. When your conscience is clear and God knows he can take you somewhere, he will make sure your teachers are present. Amen. 
Amen. See. And they are not taken from you. See. Now, now look at this. Verse 21 is extra sweet. Notice this. The first teacher you receive is when your conscience is clear is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I thought somebody would celebrate the Spirit of the Lord. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way walk ye in it. Notice, the voice does not come ahead of you. Some of you are waiting for a voice on the other side to tell you where you should go. But the voice shall not be ahead of you. It shall be what? So good. Have you ever felt like, if I just keep going, I know things are about to change? Yes. That is a voice speaking. Come Amen. on. It. Hallelujah. There is a voice saying, wait just a little bit longer. Yes. There is a voice saying, hold on, don't let go. Yes. There is a voice that is saying, push, don't stop. Yes. There is a voice saying, keep running, don't give up, don't give up, don't. That is a voice that is behind you. Amen. There is a voice that will begin to minister to your conscience. Yes. But this only happens when your conscience is clear. Good. You will hear him. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that one more time. When your conscience is clear, you will hear him. If you're going through a difficult time right now, God is cleaning your ears to hear him. Amen. Amen. Let me speak to the overflow. Let me speak to the people in the overflow. Maybe they will hear me better. If you can hear me now, understand this. Understand me by the spirit of God. Your difficulty is an opportunity to hear God. It is not a disqualification. Your troubles, I understand this about God. God does not come into good situations. Let me say to those who are in the back. God does not come into good situations. God is invited by bad situations with a good man in the midst of it. Amen. 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 God is, is provoked. God is provoked and is attracted to impossible situations. God loves when your, fa your strength fails you. Because it is an opportunity for him to show how strong and mighty he is through you. Amen. But will you allow your situation to form your reality? Or will you allow the Holy Spirit to deposit the truth of what your tomorrow will be like? One thing I think about, I think, and I always thank God for, is that there is no situation that is too far gone for God. Amen. If I were you, I'll be clapping my hands. If I were you, I'll be clapping my hands. If I were you, I'll be clapping my hands. If I were you, I'll be clapping my hands. There is no situation that is far gone that God cannot recover. It doesn't exist. If my mind, if my mind can be open to the word of God 
to form my thoughts. God loved Abraham because Abraham believed God. Believing is centered on something that has no reality or way to test or to see that it is there. You need belief for what you cannot see. You need belief for things that are not, for things that are immaterial. If I tell you believe me and you take my word for it, it means that there was nothing else that will prove that that thing is true. God comes to Abraham and says, Abraham, I will make you a father of nations. Abraham said, ah, Lord, you know how long, <laughs> you know how long I've been doing this thing. I've been trying now, I'm an old man and I can get nothing. And God said, trust me. And the Bible says, and Abraham believed God and it was counted for him what? Righteousness. So how do we become righteous before God? Is believing what he has said, even though there is nothing. Amen. When he says you are above and not below, even if you are on the floor, yeah. believe you are above and you shall be above. Yes. If he says, let the poor say, I am rich, declare I am a billionaire, a trillionaire. Yes. Because your belief is your conscience. Do I trust God? Because when you enter into faith, now you have entered into the substance of the thing. But no one gets to faith before you get through believing. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Confession comes because of faith. But believing is just trusting. But you see, we don't trust God empty-handedly. You just need to look at your life. How many people are healthier than me and died with COVID, but I am here? Oh. Amen. Amen. How many people work hard, but lost their homes, but I still have a place to lay my head? Amen. Amen. How many people had to move out of the city, but Lord, you have preserved me, you have provided for me, you have kept me. Some of my brothers and sisters were better than me, but where are they today? They are gone, they are asleep. But me, who I did not think I was anything precious, you have preserved and kept my life. Boy. That is enough to shape your thinking. Yes. To remove you from dark places. And to plant you in the center of God's own heart. In the center of God's own what? Heart. How many of you can boldly say, Father, my conscience has been clear. What we desire the most, oftentimes that's where Satan fights us the most. That is where God will want to do something. That's where Satan will oppose us the most because that is where we have suffered. And where we have suffered, there is an opportunity for us to be programmed. Either by God or by the enemy. Amen. I have seen people who need help. But they sabotage their own help. I have seen people who believe God, that he is God, but when it comes to their own prayer, they don't believe he can do anything for them. They rather pray for you and say, I know God is going to do it for you, but when it comes to themselves, maybe one day God will remember me. That is a distorted conscience. I'll say that one more time. That is a distorted conscience. The Lord is calling you today to a place 
of complete sanctification and complete restoration of the mind. Many of you are holding on to things you lost five years, ten years ago. Listen, you have been, it's been ten years. But you are still ten years ago because you have not moved on from what happened. If your mind hasn't moved on, even though your body is aging, you're still in the past. Remember, in the spirit there is no day or night. So if my soul is attached to something 50 years ago, I may be in 2024, but in the spirit they are seeing me to be 50 years in the past. Mm. That's right. That's right. I've seen some people saying, oh, I lost, you know, in 1990, I had the best Mercedes and I lost it. Oh, that car was so... You are in 2024, you're crying for a 1990 Mercedes. When we have Tesla, when we have... Your Amen. Come on. Notice you have not moved on from a place of yeah. I decree and declare to you yes. that what you lost does not compare to what God has already released unto you. Amen. While you are standing, let me finish this. Verse 22. Verse 22. Ye shall defile also the covering of of thy graven images of silver and the ornaments of thy molten images of gold, thou shalt cast them away as a what? Thou shalt say unto it, get thee hence. Notice, you have created gods in your mind without knowing you have created them. My God. But God is saying, toss it away. And why is it using menstrual? Because that's dead blood. It's not profitable. Instead of taking the blood of Jesus that has given you life. Yes. You're holding on to things that are not life-giving. How many of you are ready to defile the covering of graven images in your mind? I will never make it. Needs to come down. Yes. I will not live long. Needs to be teared down. Yes. No one makes it in my family. Needs to be destroyed. Yes. I need to work so hard because working hard is the way of life. That needs to be pulled down. It is not the way of life. Yeah, work ethic is important. Yeah. But hard work does not produce. I know people who work four jobs and they're still poor. It is not enough. What you need is the blessing of God. Amen. And the blessing of God comes when you have a clear conscience. When your mind has been sanctified. When your mind has been purified. When your mind has been restored. Then it is easy for God to give you things. Because God can see himself. When God looks at you, can he see himself or is he seeing a different person pretending to be him? Let me ask the overflow somebody. Look at your neighbor in the eye. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Can God see himself when he looks at you? Can God see himself when he looks at you? Or can he see somebody that is pretending to be like him? Or can he see somebody that's pretending to be like him? Listen to what the Bible says. It says, for those he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. So God blesses you based on your conforming. He gave Jesus everything. So if you conform to Jesus, everything is also what? Yours. But you are struggling to get everything because you have not become the image that receives everything. Come out of a renting mentality. Go to an owning mentality. Amen. I receive. Come out of a poverty mentality of people should see you doing well, but at home you're sleeping on the floor. 
come out of a flexing mentality. It doesn't help you. Become so blessed that you don't know that you are flexing. Amen. It's just who you are. If they hate you, that's their problem. It's... Come on. Get into a prosperous mentality. Get into a prosperous mental health position and posture. Get to that place. Get to that place. Get to that place. God has shown you the way in his word. He said, I won't forsake you. I won't leave you. Don't be afraid. I am with you. I will never leave you. Know, I'm closer than a friend. God has given us reassurance after reassurance after reassurance. But we have made the voice of our struggles to be louder and stronger than the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Holy Spirit should and must reign supreme. I'll say it again. The voice of the Holy Spirit should and must reign supreme in our lives. Not the voice of those who don't like you. They don't put anything on your table. Why do you care? Amen. But if your table is dry because of them, then it means they're the ones influencing you and not God. God is calling us to a higher place. I said the Lord is calling us to a higher place. Amen. I said the Lord is calling you to a higher place. Amen. The Lord is bringing you to a place of elevation. I receive. I want you to lift your hands to him. And I want you to ask the Lord to give you the strength. To let go of things that are not profitable. Those things that are not profitable in your life. That the Lord should help you to let go of. There are relationships that are not profitable. Don't fight for things that are not profitable. It's okay to let it go. If you outgrow some people, it's okay. It's part of life. Love them. But don't put yourself where God doesn't want you to be. Don't become a lot when you are supposed to be Abraham. Amen. Amen. God says go this way, but you rather follow and go with people that can't take you anywhere. That is not the will of God for you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Give me the ability and the strength. Give me the ability and the strength. To stand in the place you have called me to be. To stand in the place you have called me to be. My Father and my God. My Father and my God. Your promise concerning my life. Your promise concerning my life. Is so much bigger. Is so much bigger. Than what I have seen it to be. Than what I have seen it to be. But my conscience has affected me. But my conscience has affected me. Because of the sufferings that I've gone through. Because of the sufferings that I have gone through. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Shift me from where I am. Shift me from where I am. Take me to another place. Take me to another place. A place I have never been. A place I have never been. That I may attain the promise. That I may obtain the promise. That you have destined for me. That you have destined for me. Father, help me. Father, help me. To let go. To let go. Of things that are not profitable. Things that are not profitable. Lift your voice and call on the Lord Jesus. Father, give us the strength to let go. Of things that are not profitable. To let go. Of things that are not profitable. To let go of people that are not profitable. To let go of thoughts that are not profitable. To let go of the old mind that has not been profitable. Father, give me the strength to let go of situations that are not profitable. Give me the strength to let go of every situation, every dead thought, every dead thing that has not been profitable in my life. May there be a shift today. Elevation in my mind, God. In my thoughts, in my mind, in my life. Slay Basari Basar de Leti Poroba Sute. Le Marie Parukle Ibi Nikrasa 
ni ministra se dole mari panacro do gosto se pele pari panacri nem barra pura basile si panabasante pode le kitra aqui vanusto tem gali marife tem gali marife rute le kira basanto ve que le mari basante su panabasante let the fear sit in my eyes let the fear sit in my thoughts let the fear sit in my mind let the fear sit in my perception let the fear sit in my vision let the fear sit in my spirit let the fear sit in my soul let the fear sit in my life in my heart they can't carry my land they can't carry my land lift your voice lift your voice they can't carry my land Le maraba sinto de cariba sante father i let go of the old time i let go of the old time i let go of the old thoughts i let go of the old words le maraba sinto rupa i let go replace i let go replace my sante replace my speech ve catina marito ve cara matile quita rupa la bande de cora Se dole ma, pura de mazana masanto, ve que de mazina rufo, ve para pan de lequisto, ve vida libre de place, para más de ship, para our country, ship, ve we let go of every old man, every old thing, every day, ve para pan de masanto, ve para pan de lequile mari. Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in the powerful name of Jesus in the powerful name of Jesus Father we pray Father we pray do something new today do something new today give me utterance to denounce what has been happening in my life give me utterance to denounce what has been happening in my life Father in the name of Jesus Father in the name of Jesus give me utterance to denounce what has been happening in my life give me utterance to denounce what has been happening in give me the power to denounce the patterns in my life give me power to denounce the patterns in my life lift your voice and begin to pray father give us the power to denounce the patterns that have been in my life give us the power
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I stand in the corridors of heaven. I stand in the corridors of heaven. I stand on the altar of power. I stand on the altar of power. Which is the throne of the living God. Which is the throne of the living God. By reason of the blood of Jesus. By reason of the blood of Jesus. I renounce every failure. I renounce every failure. I renounce every disappointment. I renounce every disappointment. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to denounce every evil thing that has happened. I denounce every failure. I denounce every setback. I A strong mood of prayer. Amen. amen. I don't like this. Amen. Can you say a better amen? amen? Amen. I want you to be in a strong mode of prayer. Amen. There are patterns of addictions in your family. Amen. There are patterns of limitations in your family. There are patterns of divorce in your family. There are patterns of mental health in your family. There are patterns of premature death in your family. This is your opportunity to denounce these things. Amen. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. With every fiber of your being. Begin to denounce these things in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to denounce them.
mighty name. Jesus mighty name. Hear me. This Sunday, bring all your bills that you have been that have been stubborn for your life. Amen. It will be a debt cancellation service. Amen. Amen. Your clapping says we should postpone it. It will be a debt cancellation what? Service. You hear me? So all your stubborn bills that have been in your way, present them before God, you will see. Amen. So on Sunday, debt cancellation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up what you want to give to Jesus. Grab your best that you want to give to the Lord. Grab your best. Father, I bless your people as they give generously into your kingdom. Father, multiply them and increase them. May they see your favor. May they see your goodness. May they see your hand that is able to multiply and increase them. Not just for themselves, but for those who are around them. Father, bring them to the place that they will know that you are God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said? Amen. Hallelujah. Look to the directions of the ushers as you come to give rejoicing and celebrating. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Great in battle, you have overcome. I defender, no contender, you've already won. And I will lift up my eyes to the hills where my comes from. For the Lord is my shield and my fortress.
God richly bless you. God increase you. And we will see you on Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen.